Is it too late now to say sorry? Cause I'm missing more than just your body, yeah Is it too late now to say sorry? Yeah, I know that I let you down Is it too late to say I'm sorry now? I'm sorry Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Clay, and this week's video. Hey Clay. Oh hi. Um, How are you? That was so good. Thank you. This is actually my channel. Oh. Yeah. Are you serious? I'm so okay. sorry. That's so awkward, but it's good to have oh, you. That's sorry. good, right? You know, sometimes I just think I'm just over yeah. and I want to get no, in there. No, it's fine. It happens a lot. Okay. But um, so okay. I'm gonna make a video. Oh yeah, for sure. But, I'll just. Yeah, I'll keep that I'll in just... there. That was good. I liked hi, it. All right. I'll okay. see you guys later. Bye. <laughs> I was uncomfortable, but it's fine, right? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess Hover, and it's so good to be with you. Today's video is 18 things that I wish I knew when I was 18. I got this advice from a guy named Randy Thomas, and he said the best question you can ask somebody who's older than you or more experienced in life than you is what's something you know now that you wish you knew when you were my age or my stage of life? and I love it and I've been doing it. And so in asking those questions, I realized that maybe it would be cool to reflect back on my own life and think of what are things I wish I knew when I was younger. So about five years ago, I wrote up a blog post that was called Dear 18 Year Old, and it's still floating around the internet if you wanna find it. But what I did recently was I went back to that blog post and I refined some of my points and prepared them so that I could make a video for you. So if you're 18 or gonna be 18, I hope that this encourages you. But I also think it's encouraging to somebody who's not 18 because a lot of the stuff that I say is still true no matter what age you are. So we're gonna jump in and I hope that you like it. First point. You remember that line in Finding Nemo, fish are friends, not food? I would tell myself, Jess, boys are friends, they're not food, meaning they can't fill you up. I feel like when we're young, we have all these insecurities and we wanna know who we are and if we're cool or if we're smart or if we're funny and like, I don't know, all the questions that we have. And a lot of times it's natural to look to guys to try and find those answers. And you know what? The guys, they're just 18 year olds with the same questions. And so I would say, Jess, don't pursue those guys to find your answers. Instead, just learn how to love them and be great friends with them instead of trying to get them to want you and love you. When I was working a fashion event and I was working with this amazing African-American woman, she said, honey, don't give your cookie away, meaning don't be sexual with people when it's not time. Religion aside, it makes us feel more connected with them than we really are. And so say we're in a new relationship and it's still like the time to figure out if we're good for each other, if this guy has any issues we should know about, any red flags that should be obvious. And instead of figuring that stuff out, we get freaky. A pretty normal thing to do. But at the same time, I think that it makes life harder. And I think that it creates baggage that then we carry into our older lives and it's just not worth it. I know that sometimes it seems like life would be better if you were somewhere else doing something else with somebody else. But I would say while you're here right now doing the things you're doing, look for ways to make it fun, make memories. One of my best friends, Angie, when we were younger, she would come over to my house randomly and be like, put on a costume, we're gonna go to the mall and be ridiculous. And we would do it and it was so fun. Uh, my other friends, Tara and Melissa, we would go to fast food restaurants and get empty fast food bags and pack them with something heavy and tape them to the top of our car along with empty cups with like the lid and the straw. And then we would drive slowly around parking lots and see how many people we could get to chase us to tell us that our food was on our car. I don't know that this is legal, but it was super fun. Do whatever you can to make memories that make your time worthwhile, because before you know it, this time of your life will be gone. But if you don't wear sunscreen, you're gonna look older faster and that's just not fun. So wear sunscreen. Yep, they just do. Don't cheat on your homework. Learn the language you're studying. Eventually, you'll wish you knew Spanish or German or something, and you might as well just take the time to learn it now because you're already in the class. Why not? 
you can go ahead and be your biggest fan. I know that that feels weird and it's uh, you're like more prone to be negative about yourself and more critical on yourself than positive. Have grace for yourself. If you make mistakes, there's nothing that you can do that's beyond recovering from, okay? I just believe that there's always, always hope for whatever situation that you're in. And I know that's hard to believe, trust me, really, I know. You can do this no matter what you're going through, it will get better. Make this a habit of your life. If someone gives you a compliment, if someone gives you a gift, if someone does something cool for you, the words that you say impact everything. You know what it's like to be in a bathroom with a bunch of girls and be like, gosh, I look so fat. And then all of a sudden, everyone starts saying the things that they feel insecure about. My hair looks terrible, my skin looks broken out, blah, 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 blah. Learn to speak positively about yourself, about people, about situations. It's a really good thing. I don't care what size you are, I don't care what shape you are, I don't care if you wanna lose weight, you can. But you don't have to do that by beating yourself up and saying that you're fat. You just don't have to. Get healthy because you're valuable and health is something your body requires. So eat well, exercise, eat dessert sometimes because that's fun and you need that in your life too. But you're not fat. So just learn to enjoy your body. And when you go to a fitting room and you try on a pair of pants and they don't fit you because they're too small, you know what? You're not the problem. The pants are the problem. So you don't have to leave that fitting room being like, oh, I'm too big. You can just say, yeah, the pants are too small and let it be nothing, okay? But they don't have to be that much older than you, but just people who are a little farther along in life to love you, to speak into your situation, to help guide you through things that would normally be hard. Lighting, angles, there's a lot that goes into a good photo and so just sometimes you're gonna take bad ones and that's fine. Readers are leaders, right? They'll be more articulate, more cultured, they'll teach you stuff, they can be entertaining, it's whatever, just read books, okay? This one's cool because they really don't. So if you send a guy a text and you're like, see you there, he's probably not with his friends like, what do you think she means by see you there? Do you think she means like, she hopes I'll be there? Or like, that maybe she really doesn't want me to be there but she's just being polite? Uh, they probably are like, oh cool, she said see you there, so I'll probably see her there. That's a relief, right? Because then you don't have to do the same. If he sends you a text and says see you there, you know what he probably means? That he'll see you there. When I was struggling with body image stuff and I was bulimic, it wasn't always helpful for me to watch shows about supermodels. Even though I loved them, sometimes it just made me feel like I was too big and my skin was too bumpy. And uh, yeah, it just made me focus on my imperfections. So be aware of the things you're watching and the things you're listening to. And if they're not helping you in a certain time, just don't do it because it's not needed. I know everybody's asking what you want to do, what you want to be, where you want to go to college, and it's okay if you have the answers, that's great, but if you don't, that's fine. And for those of you who feel like you have the answers, you might go a few years in that direction and change your mind, and that's okay. Don't go into debt for something you're not totally sure of. So if you're like, hmm, being a veterinarian could be cool, don't spend $100,000 going into debt on something that could be cool. Go hang out with veterinarians, go figure out what their life is like, see if it's something you really enjoy, and then put the money into it so that years down the road you don't regret the decision that you made. This one I asked my friend Becca about and she said that if she could go back and talk to herself, she would say pursue the things you're passionate about and the things you're good at. Because a lot of times the things we focus on are like our social life, popularity, really temporary things. Friends come and go, right? But the skills you develop, you'll always have. And so like for her little sister Jessica, she's a really good musician and she pursued that all through growing up. And now she's a better musician than she was. And uh, yeah, it's just a good thing to develop. So pursue the things you're good at, the things you're passionate about, and carry that on into your future. You don't need that many friends. You just need good friends. The friends you surround yourself with, they're gonna determine the future of your life and the quality of your life. So the direction you're going is largely based on the people you surround yourself with. So surround yourself with really great people. So I don't make these videos specifically for Christians. You probably know that already, but I am a Christian. And around when I was 18 is when I became a Christian. And so this is what I would tell my 18 year old self. And that is to follow Jesus. And if you don't follow Jesus or you don't really know much about Jesus, I would say get to know who he is, figure out what you believe about him. For me, knowing Jesus was completely life-changing. Yeah, changed everything. 
And, uh, and for those of you who are Christians, what I would also tell my 18 year old self is get connected with a cool group of Christians where you can follow God together and figure out what you believe together. And when you make mistakes and when you're struggling, you have people around you who can carry you, who value the same things you value and want to see you become your best. So those are my uh, 18 things that I would tell my 18 year old self. Pick and choose whatever works for you. I hope that some of them encourage you. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, The Sean Hover Reality Show on Snapchat, and we will see you soon. Thanks so much. Bye.